I'll confess at the outset that I'm really quite excited about this video. I've been looking forward to it for, for some time. I'm going to talk to you about dual starters, not the conventional ones. Now, what do we mean by dual starters? Well, if we've got a big heavy engine like the 8L3B or even the 6L3B, it's a bit much to ask one starter to start the engine, particularly in the depths of winter whenever it's minus minus 20 degrees C or so. And under those circumstances, on that engine, we will use two starters. They have to work at the same time. They have to engage at the same time. Now, this is really quite a challenging design problem. We don't want one starter to go in and start rotating the engine and then the second starter to try and engage. We have to somehow or other organize it so that the two starters will go in, engage in the flywheel teeth, and then apply the main power. <coughs> Pardon me. So, um, that's what I'd like to talk to you about. But before I get into the guts of that, I just want to go back and rehearse again um, how a conventional CAV starter works. You'll remember that I shot one or two videos on this before. So we'll just go and we'll just um, refresh our minds here. Okay, before we go on to the main part of this video, I have to apologize about, about the background noise. I'm afraid the weather here in Ireland has been fairly miserable over the past couple of weeks indeed. There's a lot of wind and a lot of background noise. There's nothing I can do about it, I'm really sorry. You'll just have to listen carefully and bear with me. Okay, now if you've been following my videos, you'll know that I've already shot one or two on these starters and how they work. But just to refresh your memory, um, I'm going to ask Valerie to come around here and we're going to take a close-up of the back of this starter here and how it works. Okay. Okay, you'll remember from the, 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 the original video that this is the main power point here. The starter only rotates whenever the full 24 volts is on there and that's where the current flows. But that only happens whenever the rotor is pulled forward. And this disc, you'll see that disc in there? That disc, as it comes forward, it lifts a little trigger and allows these bottom contacts here to close and that point there goes live and the current flows. It's so simple. Okay, now we're going to talk about some theory and have a look at the wiring diagrams. Um, this one here is the kind of official wiring diagram and here I've added some labels to it and those points on there I will refer to later. Um, this diagram is a schematic and I actually find it more useful. Now please note that the number one starter and number two starters are exactly the same. You can switch the two starters round, no problem, they'll work exactly the same. So the same labels apply, S1, S2, SOL and so on. They apply to both starters. It's important to understand this. This is a close-up of the actual starter itself, labelled in the same way as the wiring diagram. And this is just an ordinary starter that you'll be f familiar with. Notice there's only one small terminal on there. I need you to pay particular attention to the solenoid that I have um, ringed in red there. That's a pole solenoid, just the same as on a conventional starter. Now, bear with me here. I can't promise that this will be easy if you're not familiar with wiring diagrams. But if you study it very closely, you'll see that S1 is always live. S1 is always at 24 volts. But there's nowhere for the current to flow. It's not until the starter push button is pushed down, you see on the top, the top right hand corner there. As soon as that button is pushed down, then um, the relay is pulled in, the coils are, are activated within the starter and the rotor will move forward. But as it does so, S2 then becomes live. 
But remember that there's also an S2 on the other starter. The two starters are exactly the same. So S2 there on that diagram in front of you, once it goes live, it activates the Sol terminal on the other starter. Um, I hope that's clear. Again, once the starter button is pushed, the coil, the pull-in coil on the right-hand starter is activated. Point S2 goes high to 24 volts. So Sol on the other starter goes live. But once Sol on the other starter goes live, it activates the relays in the starter switch. And those relays then supply the main current. I hope that's clear. You see the relays pulling in? Okay, um, if you've understood the circuit diagrams that I discussed with you just now, you'll understand that it's actually these two relays here that do the rail work. Whenever I push the button, the two relays move down and they supply the main current to the starter. I hope that's clear. It's very simple. These are quite old fashioned relays and they're very like the solenoids that are on the back of the CAV starter that I showed you previously. You could use modern relays here, no problem. It's very simple electromechanical technology. Okay. Right, now this is quite subtle. I'm going to do it again just to be sure. Do you spot anything wrong there? I'll do it again. Is there something wrong there? It's, it's quite subtle, this. Did you notice anything wrong there? There's something wrong. The starters are rotating the wrong way. The, start, the pin on the starter should be rotating clockwise. It's not. It's rotating anti-clockwise. I'll just show you that again. You ready? Okay, now watch carefully now. Very carefully. Pay attention. I'll do it again. Now, 95% of the engines out there are anti-clockwise when viewed from the flywheel. These starters will not suit. Um, it's unfortunate, but these starters will only suit a left-handed engine. And they can't it's not really practical to rewire them again for a conventional engine. Um, these starters are really suited for what's, what's called a left-handed engine. Not very sought after. But I'm not going to scrap them. I'm going to keep them. Uh, it's not impossible at all that somebody will come along someday looking dual starters for a left-handed engine. So that's all I've got for you. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed making that video. And um, on we go to the next one.